Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by MMA veteran Dave Huckabaugh. Dave, how are you? I'm doing great, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. Dave, you got a fight coming up at Tachi Palace Fights 12 against Leron Wilson. How's training been going for the fight? Man, it's a great camp, man. It's going into a fight 100%. I've had a, a lot of great a lot of great work for this, man. I've been uh, at Cassio Award next to Jiu-Jitsu out here in Sacramento. Probably one of the best Jiu-Jitsu schools that I've been in California, to be, to be real. Your opponent, Leron Wilson, how much do you know about this guy? Have you watched a lot of tape on him? What exactly do you know about him? Um, he's got nine wins by submission, man. That pretty much sums it up, you know what I mean? He, he's a submission guy. Um, he likes to throw a head kick occasionally. Um, he's in leg kicks. Um, pretty much just watch out for submissions, you know what I mean? Basically, he's a, a good submission fighter. I think he comes from Millennium Jiu-Jitsu, so he, he's going to be legit for sure. Without revealing too much, of course, what would your game plan be going into the fight? Man, I mean, that's no secret, man. I'm a knockout artist. I mean, I got, what, 13 knockouts in the first round. Um, I, I think if I touch him a couple times, man, he's going to throw my power, and, and it changes everything. Even in jiu-jitsu, you know, I roll with brown belts and, and then black belts on a daily basis. I mean, so my jiu-jitsu game, if it goes to the ground, I'm well-rounded, man. I'm an MMA fighter, so... Wherever it goes, I'm not too worried. My condition right now is, is phenomenal. Um, I've really got a really great camp, man. i got a lot of personal things going on in my life right now that keep me motivated. Um, I, I just, either way, man, I, I feel strong about this fight either way. I guess five losses are, are due with TKO on the ground as well. So, you know, I mean, I, I just, I, I like to come to put in work, man. Will that be something that you, I don't know, kind of have to worry about a little, that you don't overcommit on some of your punches uh, to allow him to be able to take you down or clinch up with you and, and get you in tight? Is that something that you've uh, kind of in the back of your mind going to worry about when you are uh, going on the attack? You know, uh, anytime you find somebody with a, a good background and submission, you just got to worry about keeping your posture up, you know what I mean, keeping, you know, keeping a good base. Um Always position before submission, man. Just basic jujitsu rules, you know what I mean? It, it's really hard to submit somebody or armbar somebody when you're getting hammer fisted in the head, you know? I, I wrestle, I fought some really good wrestlers, and I fought a couple of really good jujitsu guys on, on my background. Um, I feel the biggest thing in this fight, to be honest with you, is going to be conditioning. It's going to be whoever comes in with the best strength is going to win the fight. Whoever's going to come in with the best condition is going to win this fight. Dave. You're on a great win streak right now. You've got a, a, a lot of quality wins that, that you've um, accomplished here in the, la the last year. You had a win streak in 2007 and 2008. What's the better win streak, the one you're on now or the one you were on 2007-2008? Uh, this one for sure, man, because the 2007-2008, I, I learned a lot on that losing streak. It uh, actually put me to a better place than Jiu-Jitsu. It made me more get my game a little bit more well-rounded. Well and with this win streak, if you look at the names that I've beat in the last five fights, they're all reputable. Everybody's a, a decent name. You know, Mike Cook is tough. Jeremy Freetag is tough. He, he, his, his record's upside down, but if you look at his level of opponents that he's fought, they've all been tough. I mean, uh, Warcock, Ruben, I don't want to speak on him. He's super tough. I mean, if, if, you, if you look at the win streak that I'm on right now, my last five fights, all the dudes have been probably as tough as live on or, or tougher, you know what I mean? So actually going into this fight, looking at who I fought compared to who he fought, I think I'm in good shape now. What do you attribute this, this win streak you're on right now to? Is you're doing something different preparing for fights with conditioning, you on a different diet, you, you're uh, training smarter. What exactly uh, do you attribute your success to? Man, I got rid of a lot of bad habits, man. Just, you know what I mean? I, I cut some ties with old training partners that became, that became cancers in my camp. Um, the last, the last, the, the last six fights, I've actually got rid of a lot of the, I've got a whole new, kind of a whole new training style. My jiu-jitsu now is, it's really well-rounded, so I don't, I don't mind on going to the ground now, so I have that confidence, you know what I mean? What happens is when you become where I'm at right now, I, I'm, I really feel that I, I can compete with the best heavyweights in the world. I mean, honestly, in my mind, I want a chance to do UFC. I want a chance to, to get the knockout of the night, the submission of the night. I feel in my heart, my confidence is at a place where, where it's just, I'm unstoppable right now. Um, to be 
you know, I'm a 50 man with their training camps with the Jiu Jitsu, with Tracio guys, and, and my stand up coach, Sean Diego. The sparring partners that I have, man, right now are just out of control. I mean, we're, we're doing 10 to 15 five minute rounds, rotations, with every two minutes as you die. Um, you know, we're, it's just crazy, man. The camp has been, it's been awesome. It's been a true eight week camp with, with no injuries, you know. I mean, I, I can finally say out of 20 fights, this is one of the first fights I'm going into injury free right now. You mentioned that you would like an opportunity to fight in the UFC. Is a win here against Leron Wilson, is that enough to get you there, or do you think that you'll have to do a little bit more because I'm, you're on this massive win streak and you beat some quality names? Is this the fight after this one that you anticipate you know, possibly getting a call to the UFC? Well, you know, the problem, here's the problem with, you know, the, the calls, because I never took training as serious as I have for this last year. I've never trained full-time like I really have put everything full-time now. You know what I mean? I, I usually just train during fights. Oh, Dave, you got a fight coming up. So I would train for six weeks or eight weeks. I've actually, I haven't stopped training in the past year, you know, nine months. I've been training hard, and I, I just, I'm ready for a phone call now to fight anywhere, anybody, you know, that. That's my goal, and that was a problem that I had in my previous fight. I got I got on a good win streak the, the times before, just training for one fight in particular, if you know what I'm saying. Hey, I might sit on the couch for two months and then get a phone call. Hey, Dave, you want to fight in six weeks? Oh, yeah, and then I would train. Well, now, I haven't I haven't been on the couch, and I've been in the gym for over nine months straight. I mean, four to five days a week with jiu-jitsu training in the mornings and and, and just it, it's been crazy man my life has completely changed around because this is i'm 37 years old man but i'm considered a young fighter i started when i was 31 i've accomplished a lot man i have three heavyweight titles you know right now for three different organizations i mean i don't know what more a guy has to do to become a ufc fighter i mean i've I, man 20 professional fights i'm 16 and 4 i rematched two of the dudes and one of them so if you look at it i'm really 18 and 2 i mean what does the guy really have to do to get there you know what i'm saying do you think it has to do at all with with your age is that maybe something that possibly they're they're looking at like oh maybe you know if we keep him around a little, we we can't really develop him because we you know we'd rather have maybe a younger guy in there. Is that something that maybe they're thinking possibly? I don't know. You know, I, you know, it's hard for me to say, man. I, I do know that they do like the younger crowd. That people, but I mean, man, I'm a I'm a young fighter. If you really look at the at the, at the statistics, I started when I was 31 years old. To accomplish what I've accomplished in such a short time, that's kind of unheard of. You know what I mean? Um, personally, man. I, I just, I finally got with the right people. I'm with, uh, I'm with Malky right now and Ricky with First Round Fight Management. They managed John Jones, Frank Mir, Big Country. Uh, I signed with them this past year. They put a few opportunities in front of me with Shark Fights, with, you know what I mean, the Tachi Palace Fight. I know you win one or two fights at Tachi. There's people up there that are watching, man. So, so you know, you never know, man. This could be the one, you know what I mean? And that's the way I just gotta stay positive and, and keep working forward because, I mean, that's, that's my chance, bro. I, I want to compete with the best in the world. That's that's where I'm at. And, and my confidence is there. My training is there now. I just I just want a chance, man. I'll, I would I would love to fight any one of the top ten ranked heavyweights just to show everybody that that I'm capable. I know where I'm at physically and mentally. You were supposed to fight Bobby Lashley for the Shark Fights heavyweight title. Why didn't that fight happen? There was uh, a couple things that on the internet about why this fight didn't happen, but why exactly didn't this fight take place? I guess uh, the Texas commissioner, man, wouldn't, wouldn't accept my, my medicals, which is it's really unheard of because I fought in Nevada, I fought in, you know, Mississippi, I fought, I fought everywhere, I fought all the way around. But the uh, Texas commissioner, uh, the state commissioner there, wouldn't accept my medicals. So, I mean, I have no idea what, for, for what reason. It was pretty much, he pretty much told me that I could fight in any other state, but I'm not going to fight in Texas. And rumor has it that there is a there was a fatality in Texas in MMA. I guess over I don't know. I haven't done the research on it, but I think I was considered a liability, and he didn't want to take that chance. Is that a fight you still want? I would love that fight. Bobby Lashley's really tough, man. But I mean, I mean, no disrespect. He's very one dimensional. You know what I mean? Uh, if Bobby Lashley doesn't get you on the mat, he, he he's in trouble. I mean, my takedown defense is phenomenal, man. I, I work with, with great wrestlers. I mean, I, I 
work hard right now. Bobby has a very bad conditioning problem. I mean, I, even though he's with Josh Barnett, Josh is a savage beast, man, but Bobby's not the fighter he's made out to be. I would love that fight. If the UFC doesn't come calling, would you be open to going to, let's say, like a Bellator? Because right now their heavyweight uh, division, you know, they they had a tournament. It's over with. They're still waiting on their final. But, you know, there's going to be an, another tournament, I would assume, in the in the future. Would you be open to going to Bellator? Yeah, that's actually, uh, actually been in the negotiations. You know, uh, I can't really speak on it too much right now, but... but Why we're on the theme of outside the UFC, there's a lot of good-named heavyweights. I mean, maybe, you know, they fall on some hard times, but there, there's still a lot of guys with a lot of good names, like uh, Andre Arlovsky, Tim Sylvia, Paul Buintello, to just name a few. Any chance that a name like that comes up, would you be willing to fight one of those guys? Well, absolutely, for sure. I've actually got to train with Buintello for a while, man. We prepared him for a couple of his fights, man. He's a great dude, a stand-up dude. Um... But any one of those guys, Pawlowski, you know, they're they're awesome. I mean, to, to have one of those names on your on your on your hit list, I mean, man, that would that would pretty much solidify me a, a fight in the UFC. You know, Tim Sylvia. I mean, as much as it is, he was an awesome champion. So if I go in there and get a good a good win over him, I mean, you know, I I just don't see how I could deny how I could be denied a, a UFC fight. You know, Dave. What's your prediction for your fight at Tachi Palace Fights 12 against Lee Ron Wilson? Um, I, I really first see myself knocking him out. I would say probably in the second round, you know what I mean? Um, I'm really well conditioned right now. I've watched his fights. I, I, I've watched what he does. Um, I feel once I touch him a few times, man, he's going to try to pull me to guard or, or do some crazy stuff on the ground, which, which I can finish a fight, you know, from guard. I can finish a fight from my back. I mean, I've ended the fighter's career, so I'm not trying to brag or be over arrogant, but there's a few fighters that have got me on the ground and from my back. I've, I've done elbows and broke orbital sockets and cheekbones. And, I mean, man, I'm, I've been fighting, man, since about 10 years old, man. I have, you know what I mean? I've had a, a pretty much a left child that I've been fighting my whole life. So I'm, I'm not a punk, man. I just, I'm very tough inside now. I'm not somebody that gives up easy. If you look at my fight career, man, I've been submitted one time in 25 and that was before I even trained seriously. I didn't, you know, I didn't know really jiu-jitsu as well as I do now. Um, submit me is not an easy thing to do, especially when I'm laying down fist on you, you know. I mean, I don't, I don't really see him taking me out by, by any means. Dave, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you want to thank? Anything you want to say to the fans? Man, um, yeah, beat down fight gear is awesome, man. Take care of me, Mike Woodworth. Uh, much love to Optimal Wing Jewelers. You know, I'm an older lady that care of me. Sack Strappers, Tim with Sack Strappers, great dude. Um, Gary with Cardboard Concepts. Man, I got a lot of them. Todd Kramer with US Chiral Therapy. Uh, Danielle Stryverson is my uh, masseuse. She's awesome. John Diego, my trainer. Uh, my family, man. My wife for putting up with me these last couple of weeks. <laughs> my kids, man. Um, I like to thank God for putting me in the position, man, to, to, to get these opportunities, man. I should have put in first and foremost. So. And just, uh, you know, uh, everybody at Tachi Palace, man, for giving me a shot back up there. You know, I lost up there with my last fight, but I lost to LeVar Johnson. And, you know, when you lose a fight, people don't ever have you come back, man. It means a lot for them to invite me back, man. I'm, I'm very, very excited to have this fight. Dave, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. Good luck at Tachi Palace Fights 12 against Lee Ron Wilson. Right on, man. Thanks for having me, man. Good, good stuff. Thank you for the interview.